<laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. Yeah. I know I am, obviously. And uh, we are back with Mr. Joe Cocker. And this is a pick from our really super patron, <laughs> Cora. Thank you, Cora, for everything. And welcome home. Glad to hear you made it home back safely. Um, yeah. We love our Mr. Joe Cocker on the channel. I think we've done like four videos for him now. And this is The Letter, live in 1970. I don't know what the show is or what. It's just I found the videos. I mean, she sent it and requested it, obviously. Um, this is the one that says 1970 on it. That's the one that she requested, so that's the one I'm doing. I don't know if that's the exact one or what, but it's got a lot of views, so I'm guessing it's a very popular one. Um, this says the originally uh, it was written by Wayne Carson and the American rock band The Box Tops in 1967. Um, I don't know. I'm guessing this is uh, either a different song or a cover of it. I don't know, but I guess we're going to find out. So let's go. Go on, subscribe. Please help a brother out. Click that icon right below my face. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, leave a like. Leave a comment if you're not busy. It really helps. I promise. All right. Joe Cocker, The Letter, live in 1970. In three, two, one, go. <laughs> Chris Staten on PS piano. seeing the crowd like this. <laughs> I love how he's the opposite of Joe, it seems like, with the movements and stuff. It's so funky. So quick. That sucks. Thank you so much. I'm the man. That was awesome. Great pick, Cora. That was great. 
that might be one of my favorite songs of his now. That was, I don't know, it was, like, it was so uh, like upbeat and fun, it felt like. There was so much energy and movement. There was like velocity in it, you know what I mean? Like it just kept going, kept going. And he's just got such a presence on stage and that voice, you know, it's, there's no mistaking that voice, obviously. I, I probably can't add anything to what's already been said about it, but definitely sounds like he uh, ate a box of, I guess, gravel before he came, you know, but makes it sound so unique and it gives it such a atmosphere. I don't really know how to explain it, but he just, I don't know, his movements, just everything about him just adds a lot to the piece. There's like layer upon layer of it just from his movements and his performance alone not including the rest of the band um i don't have much uh for the info of this but i do know that i'm guessing that the piano player was chris staten uh the singers it says such as rita coolidge there is a horn player named bobby keys and jim price um who apparently also became the rolling stones horn section uh carl radel and jim gordon um i'm I, I don't know if that's, like, the original, like, version of it or what. Because um, there's not even really, like, a... Okay, here we go. The letter, box top song. Okay, it was first, yeah, written by blah, blah, blah. I knew that. Okay, so is there a Joe Cocker rendition? Yeah, right here. All right, so it was on... Uh, he performed it during his 1970 performance at the Fillmore East Auditorium in New York City. I don't know if that's what it was. Recordings of both songs are included on the live Mad Dogs and Englishmen. Um, see, I'm trying to see if it was... Yeah, is it the Fillmore East? And then it was included on Mad Dogs and Englishmen. And of course it doesn't have a damn... I'm trying to make sure I have everyone's name right. Apparently Leon Russell did a song that was released on this too. Hold on, so wait. Personnel. Oh, okay. All right, so vocals, oh my God. Joe Cocker, Rita Coolidge, Donna Wise, Donna Washburn, Claudia Lanier, Denny Cordell, Daniel Moore, Pamela Pollan, Matthew Moore, Nicole Barclay, and Bobby Jones. Well, that was all those people singing around those like three mics, I guess. Uh, Leon Russell was lead guitar, piano vocals, backing vocals. So I'm guessing this is for the whole like Mad Dogs and Englishman thing. So I don't know if that's all from different shows or from what i don't know i'm confused but there's also yeah jim price on the trumpet like i said jim horn bobby keys on the saxophone uh so i don't know exactly who that one sax player was um don preston on guitar vocals and backing vocals chris staten on organ and piano carl radel on bass and then Jim Gordon, Jim Keltner, and Ch Chuck Blackwell on drums. So he had all kinds of different people here. Um, I thought it was a great song, a great rendition. And uh, I don't know, I guess I kind of want to listen to the original now. Because like, I hear like a cover of it like this, and it's this good. And I'm like, well, shit, I need to listen to the original now. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Um, I never heard of the box tops before. There's so many bands like, like every day, like when I get requests come in, you know, I'm like, damn, I've never heard of them. Or, oh, that's a cool name. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I thought I knew music. I really did up until about a year ago. And then it's just like the floodgates opened and like it, I had no idea. I really didn't. And it makes me happy to know that I do have an idea now. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it uh, <laughs> it's taken a while, but, and I'm not even like, even close to discovering probably even half the stuff yet, but I've put a decent dent, I think, in, in the 70s and the 60s. I've, I think I've covered a lot of the major bases, and there's still a lot to cover of those, but then you got the minor bases, too. There were so many damn bands back then because people had nothing else. They didn't have cell phones. You know what I'm saying? People played music because it was fun. It was something to do, or they had something to say, or they, it's, uh, they were musicians and had art they were making. You know, it's... So many reasons people played music, you know, and nowadays it's just to make money or you make art, you know. I think it's like I said in the other video today, everything's become so specialized and personalized that you know, I literally could make a song on my phone if I wanted to. Like, it's just so crazy how far we've come, but how also, I don't know, how many spaces that we've jumped back as well at the same time. It, it, we really do need to <laughs> come together right now. Not over me, though, but we do need to come together. And uh, it, it, I really do think music could be the thing that brings everyone back together. 
And I've noticed that as I've done this channel and uh, I notice things, I notice patterns and I notice that music does bring a lot of different people together. It, it brings so many different personalities and so many different opinions and that's good everyone has their own opinion that's just how it works subjectivity is a bitch it's just what it is you know and uh it's just it just blows my mind that people that would argue about anything else they would argue about politics they'd argue about religion they'd argue about the goddamn earth being flat you know what i'm saying but they listen to music and they understand it and they talk to people about it and they connect over it and of course there's still arguments over music there's tons of that but I feel like people connect more about music other than anything else other than maybe sports. But even then, like my country doesn't give a shit about soccer. Most people don't, you know, the average, every man or every woman, you know, doesn't give a shit about soccer, but around the world, soccer is the biggest thing in the fucking world. You know, it's just, uh, like I said, subjectivity is a bitch and it all is so personalized now that Man, it's so hard to get out of this hole that we've dug ourselves in. It's just going to keep getting worse and worse and more more echo chambers that just, you know, like I said, I'm in the middle. I don't care. I think both sides are dumb. And I think both sides have smart ideas. And it's just I think if people could stop being corrupt and stop becoming politicians to make money and just, you know, serve in your office and, you know, uphold your duty and oath and just leave – you don't have to be freaking 82 years old. Like it's such an embarrassment. Our country is such an embarrassment, bro. Like I watch some of like the like the Senate hearings and the committees and stuff, and it's just shouting. It's childish. It's like my toddlers. Like it's, I don't know, man. It, it's 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 an embarrassment to see what our government actually looks like and runs like. You know, what it doesn't matter what side's running it. it it's it's just corrupt in general, and it blows my mind how rich people get from a government salary it's fucking insider trading it's all this shit and it's just uh, it's the fall of rome so who's got a fiddle <laughs> all right guys uh was i really about to start the intro there well, i was about see my brain is just not working tonight i was about to start the intro again like that's so weird <laughs> supposed to end it end it you idiot if y'all know we have patreon right here that's a picture of it. There's a link in the description. If you join the $15 tier or up, you get one beer quest a month. Join any of the tiers, get access to all the full album reactions, Patreon exclusives, and uh, our Discord server. It's for members only. We got all kinds of cool little perks and stuff you can get by joining Patreon, all the different tiers. It's pretty fun over there, and it's worth it. There's hours and hours of videos on there that you have not seen, and it's uh, a different me on there almost. I, I feel a little more open on Patreon. I definitely... um share a little more and less at the same time you know what i mean i don't know how to explain it you just have to go watch it yourself and you'll, you'll understand uh, and there's also a paypal link as well in the description as well if you'd like to send a video in or a request in just like uh, miss cora did here thank you again cora for a great pick and uh yeah that is it adios